to my channel today I have a new video for you guys um, I went on my Instagram and I asked you guys what kind of videos you would like to see so today we are doing in honor of Valentine's Day and the whole lovely holiday that it is we're going to be doing a get ready with me but instead I'm gonna be doing daily makeup because I filmed the Valentine's Day look on another video and I'm going to be telling you guys my experiences with crushes and or relationships now I don't have any recent things so this is all like 20 and under because nothing's happened in the last two years. If you guys are new here, my name is Abby J and I'm really glad you guys made it to my page. If you guys have been here for a while, go ahead and leave a comment down below of like a purple heart or something. That way I know it's you guys. So I'm going to be doing like a daily makeup look because I'm actually planning on going out right after this. So it's going to be very simple, not too much because the masks and everything. So not probably a lot. I don't even know if I'll do foundation, honestly. But I wanted to start by priming and then telling you about my first boyfriend. Well, that sets in. I actually made notes on everybody. Alright, so the first guy, we're actually not going to be doing names at all. I'm going to tell you how we met, the story between us, and everything like that. So, I met him after around the age that I turned either 12 or 13. So, I was around that age when I first met him. And we met at this camp that was for our... So like our religion had like a boy scout girl scout thing together called the pathfinders and so it was like a pathfinder camporee here in illinois and that's where we met the first time now let me start my makeup honestly because don't trust me out all right i'm gonna put my foundation first even though i said we weren't doing foundation but just so that it like takes longer so we met at this camp and so I'm pretty sure I met him on the Saturday night because it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday thing. And I met him because my friend was interested in his twin brother. So yes, he's a twin, identical. I don't remember if he was older or not. I completely forgot, but irrelevant. So she liked his twin brother. And I, at the time, wasn't really too interested in boys because I was still like a little girl. I can't remember if it was her or her twin brother that told me, hey, the other twin is interested in you. Like he thinks you're cute. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't think anything really of it. I was just like, yeah, I guess he's cute too. Sure, why not? And I remember, I don't know if it was the first time that I met him or the second time that I met him that we, kind we didn't really exchange phone numbers but we exchanged um i actually remember it vividly he like came out from where they were staying and he gave me a piece of paper and he wrote on a piece of with pencil the phone number that him and i think his twin brother were sharing now i didn't have my own phone at this time so i was using my older sister's phone whenever we messaged because he is not from around me he is from the big city of Chicago while I am down here in little Mexico, Fairmont, right by St. Louis. So we were messaging all these years and we were like pretty much on and then we would break up around the time that the camporee would come. And I never put two and two together because there was also this other girl he was interested in or like I was jealous of her and stuff like that and she's actually currently one of my best friends <laughs> but at the time he would break up with me or her I don't know like maybe both of us because later on we found out that he was dating us at the same time so he would break up with us right before Camp Arie would come around the way technically he wasn't in a relationship and he didn't have to be with one of us which yeah it's sketchy I went on for I want to say I was talking to him till I was about 15 so maybe two or three years of just seeing him and we never really did anything the furthest we ever got was a hug so it wasn't like an actual dating thing because it was all long distance texting and everything let me look at my notes to make sure I'm not forgetting oh he was a soccer player that's how we met because every Saturday night there would be a bunch of activities you could do and we would choose soccer because ding 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 we are a Mexican Hispanics because we actually had other people in our group that were not Mexican but we all liked soccer so that's how we originally met these guys because they I think 
I don't know, with the way he was texting me that I remember was that he was going to become like a professional soccer player and stuff like that. Like he was that good. And then the last note I really have about this guy is that I had told him, cause I remember I was talking to him till my freshman year of high school. So whenever I was in eighth grade, I wanted to try out for the dance team. And obviously I didn't make it because I have no dance training and everything like that. But I wanted to try out because my friends were trying out and then they didn't show up for tryouts. Which was annoying because my mother left me there. So I was left to try out by myself, the only girl with no real training. So when I told him that I was going to try out for the dance team, I remember vividly. Because we were always talking about how I should go to Chicago one day to see him. I remember vividly that he... At the age of whatever he is, I think he's a year younger than me, um, requested a lap dance. Now, little Abby did not have the body for a lap dance, nor did I really know what a lap dance was. I knew it involved a chair, and that was it. Thankfully, never happened, but I remember vividly that he requested one. So, take that as you will on what kind of person he is. Yes, he did cheat on me. We found that out later on because me and the girl hated each other for years. Like, we just hated, hated, hated each other. And the way we made up was that we ended up working at a summer camp together. And I remember I was one of the first girls to get there. They had told me that another girl was going to be coming into the kitchen. And they said her name was her name, the same name. And I was like, God, I am here to have a good time, make new memories, please do not bring her here. And guess who walked in? The same girl I had been catfighting for with since I was a child. And the way we looked at each other, mm, we knew this is gonna be a rough summer and then one day i think she's the one who said it that we just need to talk about it we need to get over it because neither of us are with him at the moment like we've been done with him but we need to talk about it if we gonna work this out so we did we talked about it we laughed because we realized that he was playing both of us at the same time how he would break up with us right before the camper and we became best friends and I spent my 21st birthday with her and I'm hoping that Corona goes away so that I can see her again and hopefully she'll be in a video where we talk about our psychotic co-worker at the summer camp because that would be an interesting story all right so that's all I have on that guy um he was really nice honestly for a first boyfriend without the whole drama and everything he was really nice he's a nice guy He's very sweet in his messages and everything like that. And I hope he's doing okay. His uh, twin brother still sees my stories on Instagram to this day and he follows me. So if you are watching this video, I think you're pretty cool. I honestly thought you were the cuter twin, but my friend had already called dibs on you. So if you want me to follow back, you can let me know. I would be more than glad to follow you back and then we can maybe reconnect and get to know each other again because his twin brother was honestly really nice and really cool like these kids were raised right other than the fact that you know he cheated on me but yeah all right so we're going on to the next guy so the next guy was technically my second boyfriend and i'm not giving the first boy too much um shit about cheating on me because guess what i cheated on him too with this boy now this boy was like my in-person boyfriend while he was my long distance boyfriend i met him while i was a sophomore oh so that means the first guy i like kept talking to while i was a sophomore so i met him while i was a sophomore and he was a freshman so yeah i think most of these guys are like a year younger than me because that's just the only boys around me apparently so when i was a sophomore and he was a freshman that wasn't the first time we met we had actually met whenever he was, whenever we were both younger. And we were at my mom's nutrition club. We were like childhood friends. We hung out a lot because his sister, who's also my hairdresser, my old one, 
um, would come to the club and she would bring him and we would play in my backyard and everything and we just kind of like got to know each other and then eventually pff, he vanished. And then we met again in high school, which is crazy. So I remember vividly the way we met is because my friends, the, a whole bunch of Mexican girls, started catcalling him whenever he had left the locker room. And at the time I was just like, I mean, yeah, he's cute, but catcalling, is that really necessary? Like that just makes things so awkward to me. Like they were just yelling like, oh my God, Papi Chulo and all shit. I drew my powder and all that stuff so it's a little awkward and then i don't know if it was the same day same week or anything similar can't remember he and i have the same lunch period and i'm in line for lunch and he calls me over real quick and i am just full of anxiety like what does he want and everything like that and I honestly was so anxious that I didn't hear what he said and I ended up standing there like a like a pendeja. I was just like, like just nodding my head because I couldn't believe he was talking to me because he was pretty cute. And guess what? He played soccer. Um, but <laughs> besides the point. So then we ended up finding out that we have a class where we like overlap, like he leaves the room and I'm the one going into it. I think it was a keyboarding class for him and it was fashion marketing for me and so he wrote me a note and we started writing notes to each other and soon after we started dating now my parents are very big on the whole no boyfriend thing but it was a secret it was like my secret boyfriend now this boyfriend i actually like held hands with and we hugged and the furthest we actually got was making out and Oh my god, he was honestly a good kisser, like, mm, thank you. But, I'm the one who broke up with him twice. So the first time I broke up with him was because my friend from the same gym period as me, the one that was catcalling him, the main one, told me that he saw, that she saw him kissing another girl. And so I got really heated in the moment and I broke up with him. Later, I found out, like he told me that he never did that and that my other friend told me that my other friend lied because she was mad that I was dating him and she wasn't. And I was just like, hmm, what the fuck? Like that's some snake shit, like you don't do that. What's wrong with you? So we ended up dating again and I don't remember the second time why I broke up with him, but I did, can't remember. But I was also very shy at the time, so I dumped him through notes because that was our main form of communication. And so his hair, his sister has still been my hairdresser for the past couple years and I had only run into him once. The last note I have is that after our relationship, he got a new girlfriend and she ended up pregnant because apparently he was after starting a family as soon as possible. So if not me, than her which is good because i did not want that i don't even know if i want kids honestly right now at this age or older so my hairdresser told me that is a good thing i didn't stay with him because he had that mindset that he wanted to start a family as soon as possible so he ended up starting his at 15 and i'm pretty sure they are still together so good for him at least like he found somebody he can be with and actually wanted to start a family with and I'm happy for him he was a good boyfriend all in all I think so too oh, he was a nice high and he was handsome and everything he was pretty much one of my dream guys I think so the next boy this one's gonna be a little bit more dramatic because it was still pretty recent so this boy I also met through church but not through the campery because he went to my home church. So I've known him since I was about 12 or 13 when I first got into the religion, but started catching feelings, I think around 16 or 15. I wanna say 16 because 15 I was still with the other boys and it ended around when I was 19 or 20. So this one was pretty long. Like I was 
chasing it. Not chasing. I was jogging after him, I guess. So we were church friends. It was definitely me to him, unrequited love and everything. So the reason I believe I started liking him was because a lot of the boys from my church started leaving and he was kind of left as the only one around my age. So we started hanging out a lot. Like I would go to his house. He would sometimes visit me and we would just hang out a lot because we had a couple things in common. And he actually got me into a lot of the things that I'm into now. Like Stranger Things and Ed Sheeran. And it kind of sucks because now when I listen to it, I think about him. And I'm just like, this is some bullshit. Because why do you have to make me like these things? And now I can't even enjoy it in a piece. Thinking that I discovered it by myself when I didn't. <sighs> but you know. But, so... As we were the only people around our age, really. His parents and my parents were kind of putting it into my mind that I was going to end up with him, like marry him. Kind of like a breeding almost tactic. Like they were like, oh, you guys look so cute together. Like his mom, I remember at one point his brother told me that his mom had her home screen of a picture of me and him together. And I was like, okay, that's a little weird. Like a little bit weird. Like a little weird but his mom was really nice like she always wanted to go shopping with me because she never had a daughter oh another thing i put on there was the birthday gifts i used to give him really nice birthday gifts like i spent so much time on this so much money on every single birthday gift or christmas i don't think i ever gave him a valentine though and then there's like a few memories i still have that i think about a lot so when my parents split up my dad decided to stay at the church in Fairmont and my mom decided to take us and go to St. Louis. So at first I was going to be in the Pathfinder Club in Fairmont and I would stay going to church at St. Louis regular. And so he was like, okay, fine, cool. Like he was like, why would I have to switch churches in the first place? I should be able to make my own decision. But guess what? That's my mom. And I don't go against what my mom says because she's skitty. Then one day my mom decided that we are going to switch clubs too. And I remember I was at my grandma's when I told him that my mom said we were going to switch Pathfinder clubs and I was going to stay in St. Louis full time now. Like I wouldn't have a reason to really come to Fairmont. And he cursed in his text is what I remember. Like this was a good church boy. Like, that was his personality. He was so... He was the nice guy. <sighs> but aren't they all? But yeah, no, he cursed in his, his thing. He was like, I'm like, sorry for my language, but what the hell? Like, he was so upset that I was just not going to be coming to church anymore. Because we were... Like, he was ultimately my best friend. And I don't know if I was his best friend. I like to think I was his best friend because that's how I viewed him towards the end. And even now, I would say that he was my best guy friend. Even if I did have feelings for him. He never hurt my feelings regardless. He was really a nice guy. For now. And then another memory I have of him is that he really was there for me whenever my uncle died. Like, he came to the wake and he brought me coffee. He really helped me talk it out. And then I remember vividly that we were at the St. Louis church around the time of the death. And I was sitting by myself. And I was thinking about this song that my grandfather sang at the funeral. And so I googled it. And I read the lyrics because at the time, my Spanish is a very, muy poquito entiendo. So I couldn't understand the song right then and there. But I could tell that my grandpa was sad. And so I read, I went. And I found the lyrics and I read them and I had to leave because I started crying of what the lyrics said so I ran out through the bath grabbed some napkins on the way because a bitch crying a bitch sad and I ran out into the back alley and he followed me immediately he was talking to somebody and he immediately followed me yes Korean drama moment <laughs> I actually have a lot of Korean drama moments that have happened to me. And he just hugged me and he was there for me. And so now when I think about my uncle, I think about him and it's just like, what the fuck? Like, 
This shit sucks, honestly. But there's always something that will make me feel better about why I don't like him anymore. So, while I was at the summer camp, a girl had told me, a girl that I grew up with and that was much younger than me, by at least four or three years, and I was already of age, which means he was close to being of age, but while she was still young, told me that she was talking to him in a very serious relationship way. And I was like, oh really? Like, I find it odd whenever, like, something kind of illegal is happening. But I also felt a little bit betrayed by her because I thought we were friends and she knew I had feelings for him. So I thought that friends should like at least talk about it before instead of just going after the boy. Or if he went after her, either way, regardless, I was upset. But at the camp, I, she got caught a lot flirting with this other boy. So I told him about it before he came because at the end of the day, I am his friend. Whether he likes another girl or not, I am his friend. He like cared at the time and then he didn't care really. So that happened. And don't know if they're still dating because they ended up dating shortly after that. Don't know if they're still dating to this day, but when I found out the news that they were dating, like officially, like he posted on his Instagram, I unfollowed him and I unadded him on everything. And I swear to myself that I would not contact this boy again because if she's underage, and he's dating her. How would that look on me? If I did become an influencer or anything like with the YouTube channel, how would it look on me being friends with somebody who is technically dating a child once he becomes of age in a couple months? Because his birthday was in August and this was happening around July. So now technically by then, yep, he was 18 and she was still underage. I didn't find it right. Apparently her parents and his parents we're fine with it which okay whatever but I my morals were not fine with it at all I was also upset spaghetti so Ugh. and then one day I take out this girl from the church from the Fairmont church this younger girl she's around Sydney's age so I think she wants I want to say she's 16 now but it's been at least two years and so if it was two years ago, I would make them about 14. And me at 20, which would make him at 19, turning 20, around there. And she had told me the story about how he was also dating at, before this one, before this, the first one, he was dating another younger girl. And she was around Lila's age, or she is around Lila's age. So at that time, she would have been like 14, 15, and he would have been 18, 19, something like that, like turning 18, close to there, around that time, I don't know. Or he could have been 17, and she could have been like 14, 13, but she was just telling me stories about what they did, and I was just like, that is honestly disgusting. And that their parents were even okay with it, and I was just like, this is a church that is pretty much breeding pedophiles because I remember being actively kind of sexualized at the age of 15, 16 when my body started changing a lot of men would look at me funny while I was there and I would also constantly have to hide my body and stuff like that i wouldn't be allowed to show my shoulders and i would always get yelled at for wearing short dresses or not wearing shorts underneath it because there's men watching but i'm a child right so i would think that the men shouldn't be watching a child in that manner and i also remember her father the second girl her father making a joke whenever we had a pathfinder uniform fitting and his wife was measuring me with the tape and around that time my boobs had just came in like C cup little Abby J in the house and she put the measuring tape around my chest and he made a joke to make sure you get it right on the nipples and I was like 
the age of 15 you're making this joke to me 16 and he just laughed about it and there have been instances after that where he came on really close this is not my mascara he came on really close like 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 social distancing sir please but it ain't about him i never sat right with him regardless but yeah, no, I just felt awkward at that church at the end of it. Because why should I have to hide my body from grown men's eyes? Because I know that there's a verse in the Bible, and it's one of my favorite ones, where it says, like, the men are asking, how can we turn our eyes whenever, like, women are, like, whatever, seducing and whatnot. And Jesus straight up told these men to pluck their fucking eyes out if they'd be doing that. And I was like, hmm, men can't live by the Bible, apparently. But they will expect us to whenever they want, want us to wear makeup and all that shit. Ironic. So I haven't been in contact with him since because it doesn't sit right with me that he was dating younger girls and he was older. Because I am a sister to three young girls and a boy. <laughs> but I have three younger sisters so that made me very uncomfortable because I remember growing up that I at school was kind of not like untouchable but more like unspeakable to my brother's friends because they were considered too old so my brother right now is 26 and I am 22 four years so four to three years those boys were too old for me. And so they wouldn't even approach me because of how my brother treated me. He would tell them, absolutely not. Because I was too young. And so that made me believe that that is a good age gap where you shouldn't be talking to girls that are underage. But he did it anyways. And around that time, one of David Dobrik's friends also did that. And because I was gonna start a YouTube channel soon, I didn't want to be associated with him and have everything go to shit if anything did happen. And they would be all like, oh my god, Abby J supports a guy who's into children. Which I do not. So I've cut up all contact with him. And then my last note, I know this one got really serious. The next ones are pretty funny though. Furthest I went with him was that I've held his hand and I kissed him on the cheek one Valentine's Day. But that was it. Nothing else further. Thank god. I would have regretted it so much. Alright. Alright, so the last two boys I'm going to talk about are from high school and a little bit of middle school. So, the first boy, I met him in my sixth grade class, but I didn't start catching feelings for him till about seventh grade and eighth grade and then like a little bit through high school because he was fine and he's still fine because I found his Facebook today and I sent him a friend request. <laughs> and um, so in seventh grade, we were pretty friends at the beginning, like we got along well, we were mostly friends and we ended up friends at the end and everything, like no bad blood between me and this guy regardless if we had feelings for each other or not. His dad was a cop at the middle school and I got along with his dad really well, like his dad really liked me and I was cool with his dad. He was a very popular boy and very cute, so cute, super cute. The main thing was around that time. I think he had a cell phone, but I didn't, so we mostly just wrote notes to each other and just handing them back and forth. And I would keep them in my house in a little bin from like a Christmas gift, I think. Like it was a bin that had lotions in it. So I kept it in a bin and I had something on top and I wrapped it around with like rubber bands. And <laughs> my mom and dad actually ended up finding those notes. And I actually talked to my mom about this today and she's saying, that I said they were uh, my older sister's notes with a boy and that I didn't know anything about them but I specifically remember being in the basement and like crying because I was getting in trouble for being into boys and all that and that like they I'm too young to be saying I love you or that I like somebody and I was like okay sure yeah I lied apparently is what she's saying but I remember specifically so it was kind of a me to him me and him don't know if we did like each other don't know if he really liked me because he said he couldn't date me because he was grounded and i was just like mm, don't understand that really and then i guess it makes sense now because his dad was the cop so his dad was at school but i don't know 
but there was a Korean drama moment that I remember and like it still like gives me butterflies to this day because I think it was the note where I told him that I actually did like him and like I confessed first like I told him I loved him and we had passed each other in the hallway and like he was right here like he his chest was right here and it like it felt like time stopped because I could just feel my heart pounding so hard and then like just like nothing happened and I was just so heated like oh that was a uh, that was too much the furthest we ever did was a hug we ended up being friends all the way through high school I remember having classes with him he's a really cool guy and I hope he's doing really well and then the last play I had for you today he actually didn't make the original list but my sister reminded me of him this morning and I couldn't stop thinking about it uh, this boy, nothing happened with him at all because I couldn't believe he was interested in me because I didn't know if it was a joke or not because it was... I think we met in 10th or 11th grade. I want to say 11th because I remember having physics class with him. And then in 12th grade, when we were graduating, he was in my English class. But in physics, he was really distracting because he was always trying to flirt with me. Always being like, let's go out, let's hang out, let's date and stuff like that. And at the time, I knew I wasn't cute enough for him. I was just like, this boy is way too cute. There's no way he's actually interested in me because I had two different eyebrows. My hair was all out of whack. I was throwing, going through my like Korean, Korea boo phase at the time. So I had like bad bangs in my hair and my all K-pop outfits that I could have. It was also really popular too. I think he played soccer. The last boy didn't play soccer. The boy before him played soccer too. The one that likes uh, young girls. He played soccer. I think the one whose dad was a cop played baseball or basketball. One of those two. And this one, I think he played soccer. I want to say he played soccer or basketball. Don't remember. That's not really relevant though, if we think about it. He would just, like, throughout the two years, he would confess to me a lot and make a lot of things about us dating or going out or going to one of the dances at the school, even prom. But I just knew that I wasn't cute because in my senior year, when he kept trying, I was gaining weight. And so my self-esteem was really going down because I worked at the Chinese restaurant and that's all I would eat and I gained so much weight, like ugh, crazy. Like I think about it, I'm like, what the fuck were you doing? But yeah, nothing ever really happened with him because I just never believed that he actually liked me like that. And I don't know if you ever did. So if you end up seeing this video, leave a comment if you actually did or if you're just playing me the whole time. And I was just like too smart for your games. Overall, he was a really funny guy though. Really funny, he was mixed up. I don't know, definitely something Hispanic and white. And then the boy before him, the one whose cat, whose dad was a cop, was definitely white. The other three were Mexican. Because, <laughs> I don't know, I guess I have a type a little bit. But I hope my type changes because Ashian pull through. You already know. But yeah, no, that's the last boy I have for you today. I also have other crushes that I had. But none of them were really too interesting to add to the story. I actually dated this guy online a little bit ago. Like, two years ago. Or a year ago. But that was mostly just because I was bored and there was nobody around to really date. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be leaving a list of the products I use down below. If you guys want to check any of those out, make sure you leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think about any of the boys or leave me like a comment about each boy. And you guys can tell me like where I'm going wrong in this dating world that I'm not dating today, you know? Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, tell your friends about my channel so that we can keep growing. Drop your singles friends Instagram usernames in the comments below so that way I can find a boyfriend by next Valentine's Day. Or we can like just start swapping friends and like setting things up like we are own cupids. And then we can all have a Valentine's by next year. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!